All right, today's video is going to cover uh, using SSIS uh, to uh, bring in a flat file and do some error handling. Uh, so basically, oftentimes, uh, you might have a daily feed from a customer of data or flat files, and you want to put some constraints on that data. And in the event a particular row meets a certain condition, you want to send it to one table. Um, if everything meets your successful conditions, then import that into table and SQL Server. All right, so I have here a SSI package uh, in Microsoft Visual Studio uh, data tools for, uh, I think it's 2015. Uh, so first off, you wanna basically start off by pointing a flat file source. So we've got our source step uh, within a, so let me start off on the control flow. It is a data flow task within data flow. Uh, we are using a flat file source. I've created my flat file connection manager here. Uh, I have a the a file out in the folder here. Um, it looks like this. So we have a you know a couple column you know column with a couple null values, uh, basically ten ten rows with the header uh, pipe delimited. All right. Um, I need to make sure my code page is 1252 ASCII because my uh, destination sources will be 1252 code page. The columns, uh, oftentimes, uh, just to be careful, you, you're going to want to make sure that these data types and the length of these columns match your source tables. So these are defaulted by 50, 50 length and string. So if you are trying to send this data into like an integer column, if it's starting out as a, as a bar char or string, you're gonna need to do a, a data conversion along the way. Um, there is a step here, data conversion, but this, this, this approach is a pretty simple approach and we're not gonna be covering that today. So just, you know, food for thought, make sure your lengths and your data types from the source match the destination. All right, we're gonna hit okay. All right, uh, we have our conditional split here. And uh, in the file that I had shown, we have uh, the very first row, customer ID 258. So in this, in this scenario, um, we're saying, you know, if a customer ID ever meets or, or is equal to 258, we wanna store that in an error table. Uh, oftentimes what you might wanna do is if there's a certain value that's null or a certain value that you know should not be sent, um, then you can build your uh, error, error handling here in this condition. And then uh, what happens is we have our source table here looking in SQL Server, which is our customer surveys. And then our error table, uh, if anything meets that condition, we're going to send that row or rows into this error table. All right. Uh, these destinations are pretty straightforward. You're going to create a a server connection, I already have one here, but yours would look something like this. You'd put in your server, choose your database, and then oops, cancel. And then you would choose the table where you're gonna be inserting that data. And then just make sure your data is mapped. All right, and another another um, useful thought is anytime you make a change, if, if you run this, uh, we'll go ahead and run this now. Um, and as you can see, uh, 10 rows went into my destination table, which is the customer surveys. And then one row met that condition and was inserted into our error table. So let's go out and check that customer surveys error table. Right now you can see there's nothing in there prior. I run this and here we go. Um, it has inserted our error, error here. And then uh, you can take this even further and put a SMTP task or an email task and store, do like a row count store how many errors there are, email yourself. That way, anytime there's an error, it'll trigger an email and you'll get notified to go out and check it. All right, uh, but what I was gonna cover is just make sure that anytime you make a change within uh, your, your steps, you kind of need to refresh the downstream steps. So if you run this and you run into an error, let's say you go and make changes to flat file connection, I, I hit okay, 6500. You need to uh, make sure you just double click on these, save them again, double click on each step, so that way it gets refreshed. Um, all right, 
If you have any questions or current concerns, uh, leave those down below. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you like this. Uh, and thanks for watching today's video. Take care.